Eye on NPI this week, brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit, is Rich Tech. That's right. I don't think we've done Rich Tech before. I, was tr- I try to make sure that we get every different company because they all have their unique products. Uh, so this week is from Rich Tech. It's the RT3549. If I got that part number right, memorized. Um, so it's a, uh, it is a BGA component and it's very new, um, but it's, it was, I thought this was a very cool design uh, product idea. Um, something you would normally expect from one of the you know bigger, more expensive companies, but uh, Rich Tech, I do really love their power supplies, their boost converters. I use them all the time, um, so I thought this was a very neat design. So especially, it's it's you know intended for laptops, but I think and tablets, but I think it could be useful for uh, people doing um, other lighting projects as well. So, uh, like I said, this is the RT forty five thirty nine. Um, so this is a like a, for me it's like a four in one product. Uh, it's an NPI that does four things um, in uh, you know as one chip, and um, that tight integration you know is going to make it first off very small, um, but also very efficient power wise. So this is a 36 volt high efficiency boost converter with I squared C controlled six channel LED driver. So you know there's all the specs on the right, but let's go through the, basically the four things that it does. Um, so the first thing is it's a boost converter. Um, so the input supply voltage is you know three to twenty four volts. It can give you up to thirty six volt output. Uh, let's go next image. Um, so what's nice about this design is you know this chip actually you look at it it has I, I like how little you need to get it running. Um, the switch is built in. Uh, you just need an inductor and a uh, forward diode. Um, you program in um, the, the boost converter specifications over I squared C, but basically you can drive this from, you know, because it goes from three to 24 volts, pretty much any battery that you're driving your uh, system from, um, you can give the VN and the logic level for the MCU is different than the VN. It's actually like you can use, you know, 1.8 volts or higher for um, that signaling. Um, so your VN can come from the battery and your MCU can still use pull-ups on the enable PWM um, SCL and SDA I squared C pins uh, to do the control. So for example, um, just as one of many registers that are available, you want to change the boost switching frequency. Um, this can be handy to avoid, uh, you know, beat frequencies between the PWM, uh, to avoid interference with the RF. Um, also changing the frequency will uh, change your efficiency versus your power output and you know your inductor usage so um, you can tweak that in software of course there's a lot more settings that you can adjust in software but the first thing is that this is a boost converter so that's that's first up goes up to 36 volts um, second thing is it's a six channel constant current mirrored um, uh, sync driver for LED strands um, so actually let's go go back to here so when you have um, LED backlights, again, this is designed for a tablet, although you know you could probably use it for uh, other lighting projects. You want to have all your LEDs at the same color temperature uh, and the same current so that um, you have consistent, um, even color throughout the entire LED panel. Uh, and one way to do that is to have all the LEDs in a strand. Uh, you know, they're all series connected, which is why you need that 36 volt boost converter, because you can have 10 LEDs in a row and now they need like 30 volts to drive them. But at least it forces you to make sure that they all have the exact same current between them. Um, so you might end up with a panel, especially a really big panel, um, once you get to like, you know, over five inch diagonal or 3.5 inch diagonal, you'll have multiple strands of five to 10 LEDs. Um, but you want them also to be balanced between them as well. Like not just, obviously every LED in the strand has the same amount of current, but you also want each strand to individually have um, the same amount of current. And so if you look inside, there's actually a little current mirror on the bottom left there. Um, there's a MUX that provides the constant current um, control. Again, the constant current is control is all done by I squared C and um, it's mirrored to each one. Each one has a matching transistor, uh, you know, uh, emitter, whatever, uh, source resistor, um, comparator. So they all get, uh, equivalent, um, current through them. And then there's also like a feedback loop that will let you know if the LED is, um, strand is open or closed. So that's good for debugging as well. So you don't, uh, have shorts or if your LED panel 
is damaged, you can feed that back to the microcontroller that's running it. So part one, boost converter. Part two, constant current driver. Um, part three, PWM driver. Uh, so it, you know, obviously you do have constant current to sort of s to set all the LEDs to the same brightness, but then constant current can do like very rough brightness control, but you will, PWM is where you'll get a lot more um, precision. And what I thought was really neat is um, one of the things we have a guide on is why you don't want to use linear control of PWM for LEDs because her eyes are logarithmic. And so that's why, you know, if you do linear control, you'll notice that as you get to dimmer effects, um, you, you start to see more flicker and you have a lot less uh, granularity. Whereas what our eyes really look like, you know, that's especially true if you're using night mode, right? At night mode, it's like there is like off and then just a little bit light and then really light and then much, much brighter. Like it goes very quickly. Unless you have exponential controls, you see here, um, the PWM duty cycle is, is done exponentially for you so that you get this smooth curve where there's a lot more control at the dimmer lights. And then as it gets brighter, it goes up very quickly. And this is, this is what our brains like more than linear and that's handled for you. Um, so it's kind of nice. It's, it's all built in again over this I2C connection. And then number four is there's all this other extra stuff that they added in over I squared C control um, to make the lighting um, you know, easier to handle. So for example, uh, slope management, like you want to go from one brightness PWM curve to another, um, you can actually tell it, hey, do a, a ramp for me or a slope and here's how gradually I want you to do it uh, to control. So you're not sitting there like, manually tweaking the PWM rate over and over again to, to get your linear slope. You just say, hey, go from this range to that range, do it in, you know, 512 milliseconds, um, and then you can check when it's done. So it's kind of like a four-in-one LED driver. Um, kind of neat. I thought it was like a really nice design. And again, it's designed for tablets and laptops because they get the best stuff. Um, but I think this would be very useful also for uh, there's user projects or if you're doing um, like LED lighting, not backlight lighting, but just like, you know, you're controlling LEDs. Um, all of this extra capability would be so great. I mean, just even the exponential PWM control is miles better than most LED drivers that I've seen for like automotive or commercial use. Okay. And available on DigiKey. Check it out on DigiKey site. It's not stock. It's very new. Um, it's super new. It's super new. So there's not even a sign-up page yet. Yeah. However, uh, if you're interested in this, do contact DigiKey Sales, and they will get you samples. I've I found that's a very effective way to say, "Hey, I'm really interested in this chip. Yeah. Can you get me this samples?" This is cutting edge ion. MPI. This is the the NPIs of NPIs. Uh, I I prefer to go with ones that are in stock, but this one I thought was too good to pass up. All right. Five on NPI.